Hey y'all, welcome back to Hopped Up Beer Review. Today we are drinking Moosehead Lager from Moosehead Breweries out of St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Thanks for joining us. Hey. Hey everybody, welcome to Hopped Up Beer Review, the show where we give you our unprofessional and somewhat biased opinion about the beer that we are drinking and reviewing, and we hope you get a chance to drink it too at some point. I've got Andy in the attic, I've got Jay, I am Ben. Gentlemen, what are we going to be drinking today? Moosehead Lager. Andy's going to tell us a whole lot about it. Y'all are going to get more moose head than you ever thought you could ever get. So let, let's crack it and pour <laughs> it so Andy can go on and Ben and I can drink for a long time. <laughs> uh, we're just going to ignore your comments, Andy. We don't want to <laughs> like hear, we don't want to hear what all it is about. There's our first to boot. I guess over. this is the second. I'm wearing this part of my moose head. An American wow, adjunct I mean, this... <laughs> lager. It's their flagship beer. Comes in at 5%, 13 IBUs. And it smells it's like a lager. Like an adjunct lager. And it smells. <laughs> Hey. Cheers. Cheers, mates. Cheers, Cheers mates. mates. Hey, you hosers. What movie is that from, Ben? What movie? You recognize it. Strange Brew. Strange Brew. Awesome. Yep. yep. Did recognize that. Strange Brew, indeed. Though it has been quite some time since I've seen it. Yes. Long, long time. I knew it was Rick Moranis, but I can't remember the other guy's name. Yeah, I can see him. Uh, you know, as a kid who had HBO and that show would come on a lot, I watched that over and over and over. Man, memories. Thank you, Canada. This beer, I didn't describe the beer very much. It uses old yeast culture is what they said. And it's brewed longer than standard lagers for the flavor. And it says to balance the malt the maltiness with the hot bitterness. Anywho, Moosehead Breweries LTD out of St. Currently it's out of St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. East side started in 1867. It's a regional brewery. There you go, Ben. Did I do it right? No, I didn't. I was trying my list. I don't know. That. No, no, no. <laughs> the, it was started by the Olin family in the same year that Canada was founded, 1867. Susanna Oland and her husband, John, arrived with their nine children in Dartsmouth, Nova Scotia. They moved in 1865. They began, or she began brewing in her backyard and shared with the community the uh, October Brown Ale. And people were loving it, became more popular. So later that year, they started the, or yeah, Turtle Grove Brewing Brewery was started. That was 1867. So, it was not called Moosehead at the time. The Oland family started Turtle Grove Brewery. Three years later, her husband dies and she and her sons get some investors and they rebranded the brewery to Army and Navy Brewery because that was very popular. It was a port area harbor that had that served a lot of army and navy um, 
likes because that was big in that area. Fast forward to 1877, Susanna gets an inheritance and she uses some of that inheritance money to repurchase the controlling interest in Army and Navy Brewery uh, to gain, gain that from the investors, renames it the S. Oland Sons and Company. And here we go. Tale as old as time when it comes to breweries. What do you think happens the next year? Fire. Fire. <laughs> Fire guts, multiple buildings. They rebuilt, um, but on a larger scale on the same site. Fast forward and another seven years, 1885, Susanna dies. Ben or Jay, you have a question. Just trying to understand, I guess, back in the early days of when, when these breweries are working, they're, they're most likely using, I would assume, wooden vats. That's why all of these fires occur versus modern day times. You don't hear a lot about that because they're using aluminum, steel, whatever. Is that probably a true statement? Probably, but I think most importantly that I have, I, you know, there was a side article that I read that it was more like one of those oh, research articles that is they go back and they study others and then they come to a conclusion. They didn't actually do a experiment. They did it based on other research. And they found that all these older times, it was before um, the campaign of Smokey the Bear to warn them that only you can prevent forest fires. So I think that's where um, that's why now it's no no more a thing you don't hear about it because Smokey the bear is like only you but they translates into other languages you know uh, siempre tu you know that's interesting Spanish. yeah uh, uh, i'm not surprised at the value oh, add from those siempre. public service campaigns but i think a lot that would have to do with te technology <laughs> over time no i swear it's Smokey the bear only you can yeah, prevent yeah. brewery fires. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <it's> like, <laughs> that was Sudsy the Bear. Who was <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Uh, it's it's really? You don't know? <laughs> no, I don't know. That's, I just pulled Smokey the Bear out of the air. <laughs> Continue, Andrew. So she died, and, can, and then her sons uh, take control, primarily George W.C., and because there's another George. 1895, the temperance movement is rampaging like a wildfire in North America. And it leads to prohibition in Canada as well. And so George W.C. sells um, to a British syndicate just to get to stay solvent, you know, to stay alive. They renamed it to Halifax Breweries LTD. Uh, there is a harbor there uh, in um, where they were in Nova Scotia because um, they were in Nova Scotia at the time. It hadn't yet moved to New Brunswick. And so they n named it to Halifax Breweries LTD where George WC and his brother John stay as managers. Tale as old as time. What happens in 1896, a year later? Another fire. So, damages, rebuild. Then, fast forward to 1909, there's a dispute, imagine that, between the Sons and the British overlords and over compensation. And it leads to George W.C. leaving. And he purchases Highland Spring Brewery in. Halifax area, which is around that uh, in Nova Scotia. And they re renamed it um, the Oland and Sun um, Brewery. So big event occurs in 1917. So this is around the time of World War Two, excuse me, World War One. And they had in this harbor, uh, 
they would use it for as a stopping point from supplies going from Europe to North America because and they had to try and um, elude, you know, stay away from the German U-boats. There was a French um, cargo ship loaded with explosives and it collided with a relief a Belgian relief vessel that was on its way to go to New York to pick up supplies to send back over in the Halifax Harbor. And it's referred to this day as the Halifax explosion. It so the, the cargo ship after the explosion, it's on fire and it drifts into a pier and explodes even more. Some of it more catch on fire. It killed about almost 2000 people and demolished everything within an 800 meter span, you know, radius, wow. including the brewery, uh, one of the brothers, some workers. They said that this had the same explode, the, it, the force of 2.9 kilotons of TNT. And at the time, it was the largest human made explosion. It also created a tsunami. So, this was Jeez. a massive event. So George WC being the, you know, entrepreneurial spirit, very innovative. He usually takes the insurance money and he uh, moves to current location, St. John, New Brunswick to purchase Red Bell, Red Ball Brewery. And he sends his son to run it and then he goes back to stay to rebuild what blew up at Halifax. Business grows. They purchased another brewery, the James Reddy Brewery, saw the name and they were going through the records and they saw this name Moosehead. This is where we finally get to Moosehead. Saw the name Moosehead in the records and it inspired him to create a pale ale in 1928. So we're talking 1928. Fast forward to 1937, the grandson of George W.C., who was the great grandson of Susanna, who made the first one, he comes back from brewery school at the University of Birmingham, um, and he had a taste for European style lagers. And then as an act of rebellion, he brewed and snuck in a new recipe into the production line while his dad was out and that was called Alpine lager. And so then they started to make more lagers. Then 1947, they changed the name to Moosehead Breweries uh, after recognizing that Canadians, their Canadians, their love of the symbol of the moose. And today the Olin family is the sixth generation of ownership. They say that they're the quote, last major brewery still owned by Canadians. A lot of history for a regional brewery. Yeah. It's not a macro Monday. Your well glass is pretty full there. I'm tired Mine of Mine is pretty empty. <laughs> so I, I um, held off a little bit. Ben, why don't yeah. you go first on rating what? this and let Andy what? drink some? I mean, I've had yeah. this you ever had it, ben? times. I have. I know. I'm sorry. I've never I've had bought, it. I bought a six pack and I gave you guys yeah, a couple and, and, and I drank Andy's the others. got a drink. You, you've I got know. a rate. I know. All right. <laughs> uh, I will go first. Um, so I think overall, the, the first thing I'll say is I I do, for a light lager, I do like this beer. I think it's, you know, we often talk about these on Macro Monday. I, I think it, it fits kind of in that category of beer in the sense that it's it's a light lager. There's, there's not just a ton of flavor there, but it's it's a step up to me from the Coors, um, Miller Lite, Bud Light, you know, that, that sort of beer. I don't think it's a big step, but I think it's a step up. Um, you know, you, you get all the, the light lager flavors. I, I mean, I, it is just a touch sweet. It's not as sweet to me as, as others that we've had, um, which I think is probably why I like it a little bit better. But at the end of the day, it's a light lager that is somewhat mass produced. 
Um, so, you know, to me, it's not going to be fantastic. Like I said, I've, I've had a six pack of this. I got these guys a couple and I've had the others. So uh, I've had it a couple of times already. Very easy to drink, obviously. Um, I think this, you know, this might even be a keg beer for me, uh, potentially, uh, because it is light, easy to drink. It goes down pretty easy. Uh, but I'd probably get tired of it after <laughs> after a few pints. Um, that all being said, I, I think it's fine. I, I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, you're super generous. <laughs> this to me is just, I'm sorry. Um, no offense to Moosehead and their, their wonderful history. Um, this to me falls into the same category as most of the macros that we drink. Um, I got to disagree with you, Ben. It's super sweet to me. <laughs> um, it, it's full of flavor, but it's very sweet. And it's got the heavy, heavy lager flavor. At best, I'm going to be able to do with this probably a five and a half. And if I come to your house, I don't want a keg off this. I don't want to plant off your keg. I mean, just just I'll be clear. I'm not getting a, a, a keg of Moosehead. I'm just saying. <laughs> You've just redeemed yourself. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> get one but i would not buy one that, no. yeah it's uh yeah th this would fall clearly into the macro category for me and, and you know i i love the history aspect of it i appreciate andy you sharing all that um i wish i'd had forethought to talk to some of my uh, my buddies because i've got a a lot of friends from up in those areas or, uh, with the the folks that I associate with on the hockey side. Um, so I've known, actually I know a family up in, in the, the Halifax area now are the, so. Yeah, it'd be great to hear if this is something they actually drink or something they, it's, it's almost like a Foster's where it's. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm curious. I would say uh, I like, I do like the crown. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're oh, they have a great logo. It's, it's cool. I enjoy it. I, about all I can say I like about it, really. I uh, <laughs> I get the soap. It tastes like soap to me for some reason, and it just tastes like a macro lager. That's mm -hmm. all I get from it. Nothing special. Yeah, there's my, there's it's actually a little more hot bitterness than most of them, but it's not a good hot bitterness to me. It's uh, it starts with sweet with a that's just like a so that's all I can say. I uh, and highly I've highly never, carbonated is what I've gotten out of it yeah. too. I'd never had one before, and kind of <laughs> don't need to have another one again. Sure, it's not like me. Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> feel brutal like you do. I uh, I just really didn't enjoy this one that much. Like I do others. I give it a uh, four and a half. Wow. So a low score for me. Yeah, especially after I invested so much time into reading this. Yeah. And, you know, they're like, oh, we're so fiercely independent. On that. It says it on the label, we're fiercely independent. Yeah. You know, they're not uh, – said it somewhere. But fiercely independent product of Canada. And I'm just like, oh, great. Yeah, they they're, they're didn't get taken over by a macro and changed their – they just never – and, and it makes me think, I just don't think Canada can make good alcohol. I said it. I'm putting it out there. You know, wow, Royal Canadian mist. I just or Crown, I, I, Crown I Royal is Canadian, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Uh, it tastes kind of watered down. Uh, Labatt. I'm like, mm, have you? I was about like to say, have you never had a Labatt? But yeah, tastes macro. So, so to the to the credit of some of my friends up there, um, they're not from that area. They're more of the Alberta area. Uh, one of my good friends, she's. Uh, a representative for Molson Coors. So all the Coors line products and things like that. It's so they just I, I would take I would take that over this. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, no subst- yeah, I would take a Coors over over this. Coors Banquet any day over a Moosehead Lager. You know, and I, I named some lower level. Well, some people would consider Crown Royal good. But you know, I, I've never had a premium Canadian liquor. I don't know, but yeah. I can't name one. That, that's a challenge to our viewers. Tell yeah. us some great craft breweries in Canada. Like, it's, yeah, an amazing. Let's go. And I'm sure they exist, but yeah. the distribution to here, all the way down here, would be difficult. So I'm just knocking the mass produced stuff that we get. And I'm like, mm. I mean, if I had to put a Crown Royal up against like a Jack Daniels, I'm going to go Jack Daniels every day. Those mass produced liquors, Canadian Mist. No, I'm going to go definitely. Uh, one of our whiskeys down here. Mm-hmm. What do you think of a Canada Dry? I know it's not alcohol, but the ginger ale, the tonic. What do you? It's not too talking? sweet. Taste can't be beat. I don't know. Uh, you mean? know, I'm thinking of if other. You, if you Canadian if you had products. to put a Dry and a Schweppes next to each other, I don't know if I could tell a difference. I, I'm not. Well, uh, I don't have a big ginger ale game. I like ginger so beer. What about- what about a Canada Dry versus a uh, Fever Tree? Fever Tree. A what? And the, the, the tonic waters. Fever. Water. I don't drink tonic. I, I'm a soda. Yes. I can't do tonic. But Is soda's it? same. I mean, Ben, I'm sorry. We're beyond you. This is yeah. Fever Tree, I think, is a higher quality. It is, yeah. That is going to be a 5.7 for the Moosehead Lager. Definitely probably more on the macro side um, from the panel here today. Uh, some of us like a little better than others, but that's, you know, why there's three of us. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, definitely be sure to go ahead and like, subscribe, and cheers that notification bell. Uh, you know, you want to get notified when we have other videos. That's the way to do it. Check us out on all social media links down below in the description. Uh, and it comes to hand our hopped up beer review discord server. We chat about beer and other stuff and you can come check it out and join those who join us there as well. Lastly, if you have any interest in any hopped up beer review merch, uh, like a glass, Jay's shirt, Clay's, Clay's, Jay's koozie, <laughs> you can check that out too. Link down below. With that. For Andy in the attic and Jay, I am Ben. Cheers, mates. Cheers, mates. Cheers, mates.